in industries where there aren't people that look like you. Go where you don't belong because one day you will. When we started our business, we definitely were faced with extra challenges, some biases. We had a lot of pushback as to whether or not black women actually even drank wine or if black women could run a wine business. Of course, all of that sort of fueled our passion and our mission and really working to serve this, this consumer that we felt we know so well and deserve to be represented. Well, I think we have to start with our sister's story. Yes. Both of us were born in Los Angeles to the same father. We grew up thinking that we were only children on completely different sides of the world and different hemispheres. I grew up in Central Coast of California in Monterey. She grew up in New Zealand. And even though we were a world apart, we both grew up in really beautiful agricultural areas. We both longed to be winemakers and we both actually longed to have a sibling. We reunited in 1999 when I got the letter and found out that I had a little sister. And I was like, this really sounds very scammy. <laughs> but I, of course, called the number that was on the letter and we actually made plans to meet the next day. It changed my life forever. I just can't imagine life without her now, so. Aww. <laughs> 17 years later, we have a multinational wine company and we have a non-for-profit, the McBride Sisters She Can Fund. We have three brands, McBride Sisters Collection Wines, which are our wines from where I grew up in the central coast of California and in New Zealand where Andrea grew up. We have Black Girl Magic Wines, which are premium wines from California. And we have She Can Wines, which of course is our wines in a can. She Can Wines, we launched in 2019. We wanted to take that opportunity to give back. We've seen a lot of the struggles that women were having in the industry. So we started our professional development fund, which would be scholarships, mentorships, grants for professional women in wine and spirits. 2020 was a little bit of a different year. The pandemic was starting to take a hold of the world. We started to see some really disturbing numbers around the federal funding, the PPP grants that were going to businesses. And we started to learn that Black-owned businesses, one, were shuttering at a much faster rate than any other, and that 96% of the businesses either didn't qualify or were rejected for the PPP funding. And we decided that year that we were going to award cash grants to Black women-owned businesses. And then we had some amazing support from corporate donors as well that also were able to provide professional services to these businesses, assistance with financial planning, HR, and employee management that some of these businesses might need in such a challenging time. This wine label is called Papa Tunuku, which in Māori translates to Mother Earth. Pinot Noir is a very fickle, <laughs> hard grape to grow. It has thinner skin and really expresses the dirt in which it's grown. The wine industry has had some version of wine education, but it's been pretty dull. This is my favorite wine. We tried to create something that would engage folks in a new way and help them remember what they were learning. Super silky soft tannins. It just like coats your whole mouth. It has a really long finish and like there's really good integration of flavor. Traditionally, wine and food pairings have been, from this quite Eurocentric standpoint, that confit and Chardonnay. And we integrated pop culture. We integrated contemporary ways in which people like to eat and drink. We're talking about what goes with tacos. We're talking about wine and watch. What are you watching on Netflix and what should you pair with? Innovation really comes and growth really comes from diversity of thought. So if you have people from all different walks of life and backgrounds, it doesn't matter what the problem is, that everybody's gonna approach it and try and solve it in a different way. And that's when the breakthroughs happen. And so I think because the wine industry hasn't been that diverse, there is so much opportunity. And so we're actually really optimistic and excited about the future. I think success for me will be when this industry fully represents the world around us. Yes. That it's not dominated by one gender or one race of people, that it really is representing the consumer. More people love wine than ever before, so. 
when I can visually see that when we go out in the world and that's who's at our industry conferences and who's at the winemakers conferences, I'll feel that that's that success. Yeah.